Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I think after singing that song, you gave the job it's easy to. However, I think me being forgotten after that song is an easy thing because God's name is power. But when I, we finished singing it, I noticed this. Now, do we believe God's name is power? Yes. What? Yes. But see, the people at home can't hear you. Yes. See, they just got, what is he talking about? The name of God is power, yes? Yes. We believe that, yes? With only half of our heart. That's that correct? No. no. We only believe it with a quarter of our heart. Is that correct? No. Oh, we believe it with all of our heart? Yes. Think God's name is power. Let's do this. Mercy. Because we serve a God who is powerful, all powerful. Amen. And that is the God we serve. Okay? Uh, before we begin, I want to remind us of a couple things. First is we've been doing Chosen on Wednesday nights, and so the link for that has been sent out. And then parents, we have these books for you for younger uh, Sunday school age uh, children, and so these will be get sent out to you this week if you don't have one already. And the idea is to follow along as we watch The Chosen. This week it is about Shabbat. For the adults, we also have a discussion right after the showing, and then two, uh, each home group has uh, a booklet to discuss. It won't be as fun as this one, though. This one has word searches in it and scrambled notes and the Hebrew alphabet, but that's for our kids, for our young theologians. Amen? Amen. But for us adults, we need to dig deeper into the Word. So the Chosen on Wednesday nights, 7 to 8, and then don't forget, too, uh, that's in lieu of prayer meeting, but you can still send your prayer request in to Sunset Ministry SF Prayers or just contact, contact the office. The next is on the 26th, we will be having another outdoor service because that is the precursor to our reconvening here at 3010. So on the 26th of this month, we'll have outdoor service, and then as soon as service is over, we'll turn our chairs around, go out on the street, and we will have a block party, as Dorinda said, for our neighbors around the church. One, to let them know that we are re reopening, and then two, to celebrate with them what God has done. So we have. Uh, K-Jazz coming, which is a nice little jazz combo, which will be out in the street playing jazz. And then we will have food. We will, will not be having hot dogs. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I thought you'd like to know that. <laughs> However, we will, we, will, we will be having a taco stand. It's all you can eat. So every person that is here that, that day will get a Sunset Ministry wristband. And this allows you to walk up and say, I need more food. And then, too, all of our neighbors will be getting these as well. So we have plenty of them. So make sure that you hear it so you can flash your Sunset Ministry wristband, which also has Micah 6 8 on it, to remind us of the things that we're to be doing to the Father. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Precious Jesus, indeed, Lord, we bless you for today. And we thank you that, Lord, we get to worship you again outdoors. We get to worship you in person. And Lord, we wait for that day, Lord, when we can gather with you and with each other. Lord, without the worry of COVID and all of its variants, the Father, until then, Lord, we will gather in the name as much as we can, as we can, Lord, with all of the protections that you provide us. And so, Father, as we look forward to regathering here, the Father, you would continue to join us and guide us with your spirit. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and blessed name, Lord. Amen. Today we're looking at the last part of Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. And it reads this way. Peter has just preached this first sermon. And now when they heard this, that is the people that were there, they were pierced in heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what do we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, and as many as Jesus Christ will draw unto himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved 
from this perverse generation. So then those who had received the word were baptized. And on that day, God added 3,000 souls to the church. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and wonder. And God did many wonders and signs that were taking place through the apostles. And all of those who believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with everyone, anyone who had a need. Day by day, continuing to be of one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day. Now, we read this in today's context, and we go, what does that have to do with us? That was the early church. No, it has everything to do with us. Because all of us want awe and wonder. Amen? Amen. We want God to do all kind of miraculous and wonderful things. And then when he does them, we just kind of do something else. No, the idea here is that the Father is working with us and through us. And the Father is always doing things of awe and wonder. And I'll share a few through with them as we go through the service. The first, a couple reminders. The first one is, remember at the beginning of this chapter, chapter 2, the Holy Spirit has come. Say that with me. The Holy Spirit has come. You ready for this? When Jesus Christ spoke into your life, and when you said, yes, Lord, the Holy Spirit came and took up residence within you. Okay, ready? Let's do the finger test. Take your finger like this. I know there are those of you, what's he doing? Just follow along. Take your finger like this. Ready? Repeat after me. I am a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Once more. I am a vessel of the Holy Spirit. The Father has spoken into your life. Then we remember this too. That when the Holy Spirit came that day at Pentecost, each one of us were given four gifts. Now, what were those gifts? The first one was the gift of the Holy Spirit itself. Remember, Jesus it says, I will send you the Comforter, and the Comforter will be with you. That's the first gift. The second gift was a, the gift of hearing. They heard the wind, which is the movement of the Holy Spirit. Then they saw, which is the gift of sight, they saw play as the flames of fire on everyone's head. Then... They had the gift of speaking because people were able to speak and hear in their own languages. Now, what's that about for us? God has made each one of us, as we learned last week, bi and trilingual. Bilingual, and that, yes, many of us speak different languages, yes, but now we are trilingual. We speak into different cultures. We get to hear people's despair. We get to speak hope to that. We hear or see their aloneness, their loneliness. We get to speak Christ to those situations. The Father has brought each one of us through this pandemic, as we come through this pandemic and all of its variants, the Father has been working in each and every one of us that through the Holy Spirit, we're now able to speak His truth in the context that people need to hear because People are concerned. They're worried. Where do I go for truth? We have that truth in us. Now we're able to speak it from the context of the pandemic to speak into their hearts, minds, and souls. And so the Father says, I have made each and every one of you by and trilingual that you're now able to speak Christ into the context of people's lives as you see and hear their loneliness, as you see and hear their despair the things that are going on in their life. Now, what happens next is this. Peter preaches this sermon, this wonderful sermon, probably the best sermon in all of Christendom. 3,000 people will respond. That's good stuff. But now, when you hear a good sermon, the, that's the thing there is to apply that truth to your life. And that's what happens here, because the people go, now what? What do we do? We've heard this truth. We want to receive this truth. What do we do? The first thing he says is repent. Repent. We hate that word. Go ahead and admit it. 
God says in your life you need to repent, you go, I don't really want to do that. God says you need to, but I don't want to. Repent is not so much as saying I am sorry. Repent is the idea of changing my complete way of thinking. And so what has happened to us in the pandemic is that many of us have begun to let our Christian lives become kind of a, uh, it's an add-on. It's become even more consumeristic. Many of us have just become Christian channel watchers. Do, do that. I like that one. They go to something. I don't know what that one is. I listen to this podcast. And, say that. and so we keep switching as opposed to understanding and knowing that the Father has spoken into our lives, filled us with the Spirit, and when he says we are going astray, to repent, Lord, change my thinking that I may come back to you. And that has to happen in our lives sometimes on a daily basis. Lord, I need to surrender again to you, Lord, to repent. And Lord, you change my thinking. The Barna Report has done several, several research studies on this whole idea of post-pandemic Christianity. And one of the things they found out is that one-third of Christians People who say, I love the Lord. People who say, I want the Lord to, I want God to be first in my life. Have suddenly said, I'm done. This is too big for even God. What do you say? Our God is powerful. Our God's name is powerful. Yet people drop out. Why? Because when we become consumer Christians, we're no longer active participants in our faith. And the Father says, I want you to now become active participants in the faith because I have given you the Holy Spirit. Remember, we are a vessel of the Holy Spirit. We don't sit there and let things go wide. And that's not we let the Holy Spirit out of us. And so the first thing he says is repent. And so often we need to do that, come back to repentance. Then receive the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit is already given to us, now what do I do? The idea here is that I allow the Spirit to begin to work in my life. Remember, John, the, John the Baptist, baptized a baptism of repentance. Lord, I repent, change my thinking. Jesus, now the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes us with power. And what happens there is we let that power sit. And unless we use that power, it just begins to go away because we're not actively engaged with it. And so for in our context today, the idea is that we become actively engaged with the power of the Holy Spirit because we have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now also understand there's two baptisms here. There's the whole idea of water baptism, which is the idea that I have been baptized in Christ Jesus. I have received the Holy Spirit. You can call them one or two if you want. But the idea there is if I've been baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have the power of him in me. Now, one of the things I don't understand is Christians who say, yes, I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul, yet going down to the pool to get baptized is the most foreign thing in their lives. I'm like, what are you doing? Because if I want to identify with Christ and that people know that I am a Christian, then I'm going to be baptized in obedience to what he says. Then I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through me because I have been baptized cleansed from my sins because of the, the, the illustration of baptism, risen in a new life with Jesus Christ, and now let people see that and know that, and now I'm going to loose the Holy Spirit in my life. If God is powerful in our lives, then we need to let the Holy Spirit loosen us so that as the Father will do his perfect will in general, every one of our lives. Amen. But we stumble there. Why? Because we become afraid. And one of the things that the pandemic has done is, it has made us all afraid. Not just what if I get sick, not just what if I die, but I can't be a part of anything. And so again, the, the pandemic has tried to make us insular Christians. We cannot be Christians by ourselves. We need the body of Christ. And that is why he says, be baptized. And then the scripture goes on. It says, they were meeting together. They were together of one accord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was at work in them, sharing, living with them in community. Because the Holy Spirit draws us to community. Yeah, but how? No, let's do this. The first time I ever went abroad, 
I'm in Germany, trying to remember my high school German. It was not happening, boys and girls. It is not happening. We go to church, and I'm in the, 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 the Lutherans, and I'm a Baptist, and I'm struggling here. Oh, what am I going to do? It's so I'm trying to, I'm trying to you know, read, the, read the German Bible, and I'm like, okay, I got that. That, that, that really is doing this song. And so, but then I, I just I felt like a foreigner until we began to sing. And when we began to sing, I recognized the tune. And in recognizing the tune, the Holy Spirit began to speak into my heart to help me relax and enjoy the fact that I was in a community of brothers and sisters that I had no clue what they were saying, but we knew that we loved and understood the same Jesus. That is the Father drawing us there. Peter says, be saved. The idea there is to understand and know the work that the Father has done in you through the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit speak into you. Let the Holy Spirit be loosed in you. Now the situation was this. I went over to the Russian Orthodox Temple on Gary Street. I have no clue how to speak Russian at all. I don't even pretend to speak Russian. But I go in and the place that the temple is just filled. And But as I look at the pictures and the paintings on the walls, I understand the story. And again, the Holy Spirit speaks into my life and says, this is community. This is the body of Christ. Receive it. And that's what Paul, Peter is saying to us now. Receive that. Let the Holy Spirit be at work in you. Then he says, be saved. Be saved from this perverse generation. Now, what's he saying here? This generation is hard. This generation is wicked. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But this is where we live. This is for us. And it's this wicked and perverse generation. Remember, when Peter writes the letter, first and second Peter, he says, you have, been, you have escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Why? Because Jesus Christ has forgiven us our sins. We've been made clean from Then he says, God has already given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Therefore, take the salvation that you have, take it seriously. Refuse to allow the pandemic to continue to push you into a box that says, I need to be insular, I need to be by myself. Instead, reach out and let the Holy Spirit speak through you so that you begin to experience the signs and wonders, the awe and wonder that the Father has been doing amongst us, even though you don't always see it. We don't see it because we have been separated from one another. But if you're in your cell group, your home group, your prayer group, if you're attending services, if you're watching what's going on, you begin to see the Father is doing acts of wonder, acts of power around us. Because we all like at wonders and awe and wonder, yes? And so as we see that, the Father begins to work in us and encourage our souls. And that's what he, Peter's doing here. He's trying to encourage us, these two centuries later, to be men and women who understand and see what the Father's doing. So what are the results of being filled with the Spirit? What are the results of the church coming together? Just very simply these. First one, they received the word in 40, verse 41. God started adding to the church. It begins with receiving and doing the word of God. God doesn't just give us his word for us to hide it. No, instead, he gives it to us to share. That's why he has made each and every one of us buy and try and sometimes qualify that we're able to speak to the hurts and pains of those around us, even in our own families, because we're able to speak Christ's words there because people are hungry and desperate for the truth. Is there any salvation? Is there anything that God can speak into my life? And people around us are hurting. And the Father says, yeah, I made you that way. You have been through this. Now speak to them. Many of you will remember one of our retreat speakers, Bishop Green. Bishop, wonderful man. His bride died. He's my friend. And I go to him and I said, Bishop, Bishop, I'll coach you through this. And he looks at me with tears in his eyes. 
Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. No. I can coach him through it because I have been there. And so we started meeting. Week after week, I call him up. Say, man, you, you, he calls me up to tears. Man, okay, I got you. Because I have been there. God made me bilingual. Because we get to speak, and I got to speak, and still speak into his life. He, he's the pastor of pastors in the city. I'm just some little dude. The Father does that same thing in each and every one of our lives. Then we get to speak Christ's hope. We get to speak Christ's love. Why? Because we are saved. God has already given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Let it loose in your life because we live the word of God as reality. So we keep putting ourselves and going to the word. We devote ourselves, as it says in verse 52, 42, that we devote ourselves to what the Father's doing. Why? Because each one of us needs to be a good Berean. What's a good Berean? A good Berean is a person who hears the word, goes home, studies the word, and goes home and does the word. Hear that? Hear, study, do. James says that those who hear the word and don't do it are like a man who looks in the mirror, a woman who looks in the mirror, and forgets who they are. No, we hear the word. We study the word. Now we do the word. Because as we do that, people are blessed. People get to hear and know what it is God is doing and how God is speaking into our lives. So a soul that is fully fed is a soul that will share the free what God is doing. Again, it helps us get out of our comfort zones to help us know what God is doing. There's a story. We're having our shepherding team meeting a few nights ago. And we're talking about what we're doing here as a church. We're talking about the children. One of our souls that's in the Word, that is doing the Word, says, I watched the children, and then I went and told all my friends about it. I even went to work and told them about it. Because I wanted them to see and know what Jesus was doing. One of my co-workers, non-Christian, comes up and says, you know what I did? No, what did you do? I went out and bought a Bible. So I know the rest of the story. Why? Because people that are in the Word, know the Word, do the Word, naturally share what God is doing. And that's what God is calling us. To come back together, to be able to share and know and do the Word of God. The next thing that happened was this. They became a fellowship in communion. They were breaking bread together. They were praying together. They were worshiping together. They were having meals in each other's homes. Yes, the pandemic is still at us. But what am I doing in my prayer group? What am I doing in my small group? What am I doing in my home group? What am I doing in the context of, that I'm able to share and know what God is doing? How do I share? Do I call someone up and pray with them? Do I say, this is what God is speaking into my heart today? Occasionally when I walk into the office, our staff said, did you know what God said to me today? No, oh, so they tell me I'm encouraged. Because each one of us needs the encouragement of the Holy Spirit to speak through us from someone else. Because we cannot do it. We cannot be the church scattered. We have to be the church gathered. Because when we gather, the Father releases us for worship. The Father releases us for community. We begin to see with new eyes what God has been doing, what God will continue to do. When we gather, there is the joy of seeing one another. There is the joy of watching what the Father is doing in each one of our lives. There is the joy of laying on of hands, the touch of the Holy Spirit. The touch of being able to say, yes, I heard you today. Let me pray with you. Let me be encouraged by you today. But as we continue to let the fear of gathering keep us apart, we again, we become insular. And suddenly, we begin to drift. A coldness takes a part of our heart. Whereas community, gathering, worship, being together, hearing the word of God together, doing the word of God together, practicing what it is God is saying in our lives together, suddenly the power of God is released amongst us. Back up to verse 41. And God 
kept doing acts of awe and wonder. I had a wonderful young woman come to me and says, Jerry, I want to see God do acts of wonder and power. I want to see him divide the Red Sea. I want him to see him do this, this, and this, and this. I said, that's wonderful. Do you open your eyes? Because what happens is when we come to God with our own agendas of what acts of power and wonder are, we forget that God is wonderful. God is all powerful. This morning, a wonderful young lady walks up and says, do you know what God has done? No. And she told me this whole story about what God has done in delivering someone. That's wonder. Someone walks up to me and says, did you see this? And I look and I say, wow, God is at work. Because we get to see God. God in our lives today remove from us the blinders that keep us from seeing you. Lord, remove in my heart. Lord, help me to repent. Help me to live as a saved person. Help me to release the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. That, Lord, I am now able to see your acts of power and wonder. I was flying back from L.A. the other day. And I'm sitting there in the plane. I'm reading a book because I'm working on my sermon. And the father says, write down what I've been doing. Now, I hate it when people ask me that question. What's God doing in your life today? But I started writing it out, took out my phone, took it on the phone, and started just typing it out. I came up with 35 things that God has done in our church in the last year and a half. Acts of awe and wonder. Acts where God has delivered people. Acts where God has saved marriages. Wonder. Acts where God has delivered. Where God has unexpectedly done things like our COVID-19 fund. Awe. And so as I began to write out that list, I'm like, God, you, 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 you've been doing good stuff. And God says, what do you expect? When my people allow me to do my work through them, they will always see awe and wonder. When my body comes together, I release the power of my presence in and through them. So this week, you're going to, each one of you is going to get, look for it in your mailbox or on our CC page, CCC uh, page or however we get it to you. You'll get that list. Read it, then add to it. Because that list is purely from my perspective. Read it and then add to it from your perspective. What have you seen God do? Because the Father is always doing acts of awe and wonder. And the Father is calling us back together that he may do even greater acts of awe and wonder because People are ripe. People are hungry. People are thirsty. People are longing to hear and know the truth of God in this context because, remember, the, the pandemic has beat them up as well. Yet the Father said, now that you're coming out of this, my people rise up and speak. Gather as the body that I may release my power through you. That men and women may come to know and walk with me. What did Peter, Peter say? Be baptized. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. One of my, yeah, I guess I'd say that. One of my young men passes a church. He got up in the pulpit and he said, I want to talk to you about baptism today. So he preaches his sermon. And then he says, Jared, at the end of the sermon, the Holy Spirit said this. If you're tired of being a mediocre Christian, being a consumer Christian, become an active participant. Let the Holy Spirit rebaptize you. Let the Holy Spirit speak in and through your life. And he said this. I just asked a simple question. Who of you wants the Holy Spirit to be really active and involved in your life? And people say stuff going on. And then he says, who would like to be re-baptized? 
people's hands started going up. Next thing you know, they had to fill the baptistry and start baptizing. Because people were getting re-baptized. So the first time, people were getting re-baptized. And the Father was loosening the power of His Spirit in and through that church. The Father wants to do that with all of us. That we are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. That we are, some of us are re-baptized to take physically to make sure that our lives are right before the Father. Because we repent, change our heart, my mind. That Lord, I fully release your power in my heart and mind. And the Father did what he did here in Acts. He began to draw people unto himself. So think in your heart this week. Lord, where do I need to repent? Lord, where do I need to be baptized again? Either physically with water, or Lord, where do I need to be baptized again with the fullness of your Holy Spirit, that Lord, you let your Spirit flow through me, that Lord, I stop living in my clustered soul, my clustered, my clustered self-control. But Lord, indeed, instead, I let you loose that you may have your way in me as your child. Father God, we bless you and thank you. Lord, for your word to us today, that Father, you want to release your power in and through us. So Father, help us to repent. Lord, help us to be baptized again with your spirit. And Lord, help us to center on your word, to study, to hear, to study, to do. That Father, you would bring all men unto us. These things, Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, your blessed name. Amen. Let's go back to our worship team. Last time in our worship, very appropriately, and we, we've sung this a couple months ago, and 